Welcome to The Reinvented Life with Pamela Chanel David. Do you want to step up your game? Pursue your dreams. Be the best version of yourself. The Reinvented Life is here to help. The Reinvented Life is about courage. It's about staying relevant. It takes grit. It defies gravity. It's about taking inventory of where you are today and where you want to go. Embrace change, make things possible, and reinvent your life. Call in with questions at 888-994-4995. Now, it's time to reinvent your life with Pamela Chanel. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to The Reinvented Life. Always such a pleasure to have you join us listening or viewing uh, here this morning. Today's guest, and that's, as you all know, what this show is all about, is so vested in reinventing. Her story, her journey, and what she's dedicated to in life is all about reinventing. This show, as you know, is all about reinventing. It's about creating change that's sustainable, that you can use in your practical life. And my guest today is just that. She has a story that is so relatable to so many people. She has been able to take that story and create an amazing business surrounding it. So with that, I really am excited to welcome Lindsay Ellis this morning to The Reinvented Life. She's coming to us from Ohio, not her normal place of being, but I'll let her explain that to you. And welcome to The Reinvented Life, Lindsay. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Well, I'm absolutely thrilled to have you here. I'm excited again for the listeners and for the viewers to hear about who you are and what you're up to in life. That's what this show is all about, is delivering our stories and letting people know that all is possible when you take what you've been through and you manifest it into what you're being. And that is the most exciting thing about you is you've had so many challenges in life. You've had so many obstacles in life, but you don't let it get you down. You know, you use those as stepping stones, as a step stool into what you're all about. So let's delve in here in this 30 minutes we have together. And I'd love everyone to hear a little bit about your story your background, what you've come from, and then we'll delve into what you're doing today. So welcome again. Thank you. Yes, and I'm here in beautiful Ohio farm country. I'm on vacation with my family uh, and we're seeing, we're seeing our family. So um, I, I love being here and I'm so excited that it worked out to be on the show today. Um, a little bit about me is, well, I graduated in theater as a costume designer and I ended up um, going into sales and loving it, worked in corporate for almost 15 years, absolutely loved it. Um, and after going through a divorce, it was about 2016, I realized that I was at this like ultimate rock bottom and I needed to figure out who I was and who I wanted to be. Like, what is life going to be going forward? And, uh, you know, that, that coming from the few years prior when my son was born, I changed my entire life. Like, we, we, you know, we talk about reinventing and I changed my entire life. And when my life came crashing down in 2016, I really started to ask if it was possible to have it all. I, was at, I started to ask myself if um, anything was sustainable, if anything, like anything that we work hard for was actually sustainable. And uh, it was when I stumbled upon my core values that you know, fell out that I had written down three years earlier. 
it was kind of that like aha moment that I had literally been negotiating the things that I said were so important to me for the things that I felt were important in the moment. And it was this moment that I just like, I, I knew that something had to change. And so I, I kind of pondered on this whole idea of what are core values? Like, what does that even mean? We all want to write them down. We all want to, uh, you know, the companies that we work for have them say that we need them, but like, what does it really mean to live them? And so I went on this like little journey and decided to give myself a 30 day challenge, which ended up turning into a year challenge. And I realized over that year that my life completely changed. And it was, you know, I went on vacations with my son, had a more authentic relationship with him, developed a co-parenting relationship with my ex, felt like met my husband that I, I, you know, the, the, the man of my dreams. I, um, discovered hobbies, discovered I had friends outside of work, had my most successful year in my corporate career. And I saved over six figures all in that year. And it was when I started to like root down into my values. Um, And fast forward, you know, I decided that I had a bigger purpose. So I left my corporate career and you and I have talked a little bit about the corporate career and then going into entrepreneurship. And that's a reinvention in itself um, that many people don't even really understand uh, that it's happening. And so I've been on that journey and it's, you know, and now I find myself as a coach, as a speaker, as somebody that just really wants to lead by example and empower people to be the best versions of themselves so they can be the example they want to see in the world. Wow. That resonates with me to such a deep degree. And I know other people as well. In the beginning of the show, in that introduction, one of the things we talk about with the reinvented life is it takes courage, right? It takes grit to go through much of what you've gone through. And you are the epitome of courage. You elude, exude, excuse me, courage all of the time. How does that happen for you? Do you recognize the courage? Sometimes we don't even recognize in ourselves what we're going through. So if you could just touch on that, because I see you and I think courage. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Um, Honestly, no, I I never really did. And you and I, you and I had an opportunity to talk about this. And I'm so thankful for this conversation that we had because it was, um, I, I've all I've faced several adversities in my life, and you know, 2021 and it it in it's itself was a year of adversity for my family and I, and so much so that I had a New Year's Eve party um, going into 2022 that said, "What happens in 2021 stays in 2021." Like that was kind of like the thing that we wanted to keep behind us. So I had like a Vegas like Vegas style party. Uh, because, and, and the thing is, is that for me, I've always looked at like adversities as, you know, when we go through something, um, it, it's supposed to make us stronger. It's because we're meant to go through it so we can help somebody else down the road. And that's kind of like the, the thing that I've always thought about in my head, um, that I can get through anything. I can get through anything. But, you know, it was that conversation that was like a, an aha moment that when I was a little girl, my mom um, told me I was named after the bionic woman, Lindsay Wagner. And I remember thinking that when I was like, really, when I was this little girl that I was like, I'm like named after the bionic woman, like I can do anything. And uh, I think that that like, unconsciously, I always had that in me. Um, And then it didn't resurface, of course, until, you know, this past year where it was just the aha moment that I think unconsciously that has been my, my biggest strength, but also, you know, as, as we talked about that, like almost kind of a big weakness as well until you start to recognize it. But courage for me is about just being the best version of yourself. And, um, and that's kind of like a value of mine is, is authenticity. And if I can just be the best version of myself, there's nothing else I can really do. Wonderful, wonderful. And that displaying of courage comes out also in the work you do. You know, the adversities that you faced, one of them, let alone all of them, um, would have flattened Mm -hmm. a lot of people. And so you taking it and converting it and wanting the best for others 
is what I know your work is all about. One of the aspects of you, and there's many, but one of the aspects of you is having gone through your own divorce, being a mom, mm -hmm. and being more concerned, as we've talked about, with the ramifications of that for your son. What yeah. happens to children post-divorce is in part based on your own experience and then what you've observed with others. So I would love to touch on that because that is something mm -hmm. that's very tough for people. They're going through one of the hardest times in their life, yet they want to at the same time know how to migrate through that, know how to navigate through something that they may have not and likely have not been through before. But when you look at it from the perspective of the child, which I know you have dedicated yourself to, then it becomes mm -hmm. a, a completely different picture. So if you could touch on that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I just do want to touch on the divorce that, that is just, it is one of the hardest things that people, like if if you go through a divorce, that is one of the hardest things you will ever do in your life. And um, because there's so many emotions wrapped into it in all different, all different aspects, there's anger, there's hurt, there's, you know, there could be betrayal, there could be, there, there's just, it could be relief, there could be, like you have positive, negative, all jumbled up in one big ball with a lot of chaos. And it's something that can like flatline a lot of people. And I remember that moment for me and that did, that moment did take me down. And that's when I started to wonder if things were sustainable, but I'll tell you, you know, after, after that, and after figuring out like the version of myself that I wanted to be and the best example for my child, because I remembered, you know, my child was at um, a football game and he is there on in, in the field and uh, he wouldn't look up in the stands at all. You know, like he used to look up in the stands, but he would just never, he got to the game. He did his thing. He would not look up at the stands. I'm sitting on one side, his dad's sitting on another side. And there's like three minutes left in the game. At this moment, you know, he's going, oh my gosh, instead of focusing on the game, he's like, I don't want the game to end. I don't want the game to end because now I'm going to have to figure out who, who am I going to go to? What parent am I going to walk to first? Um, whose feelings am I going to hurt? What's the, what's going to happen? Who's going to say this, something to me? Who's not, where do I feel safe? Where do I not? What's, you know, all these things are going through this little kid's head and he doesn't get to have fun and focus on the game and focus on the sport that he loves and that he wants to be there for. And so when you look at it that from that aspect, it just like broke my heart. And, um, I, I just, I really never wanted my, my son to feel like he had to choose between me and his father. I mean, we we're both his parents. And even though there was a messy divorce involved and, and there was feelings on both sides of, of anger, um, I made a pact that I would never, ever, ever say anything negative about his father to him, around him, or anything like I could be mad at his dad. I could be mad at what was going on, but I would just never let my son know that because that I didn't want my son to form an opinion based on what I was saying. I wanted him to form his own opinion and have his own relationship with his dad. And while that's not always easy, uh, I'm really, really thankful that the, that's the course that we took. And, and I will be 100% honest that it took a lot of strength to go through that. It took a lot of courage. It took a lot of discipline. Um, it took a lot of support, you know, just being able to have somebody to help me like figure out the emotions that I was feeling or how, who it was that I wanted to show up by. And that's why I do a lot of values work um, with people that are, have been divorced or have gone through massive adversity and just trying to figure out who they really are. So we can start to rediscover that, reinvent that, own who, own that person and then start being that person um, so they can start moving forward and stop living in the past. And when we do that, the kids are freed. They're allowed to be kids again, and they're not feeling like they have to adult the, the, the parents. Um, they don't have to grow up faster. And one of the reasons why I found myself into this field, not only did I notice that I was helping a lot of people that were going through a divorce, um, my ex-husband, we, we had a great relationship, and uh, it took a couple years, but when we got there, I mean, we had surprise birthday parties for my son. 
the him and his girlfriend came over and opened up Christmas presents with um, us, you know, my husband, I, and Owen, he got to, um, you know, open presents from Santa in the morning without having to split his, his Christmas. Uh, we did, we did a lot of things together. He'd come over on Sundays, we'd sit at the games together. Um, and, uh, you know, in 2021, um, my ex, my son's father passed away. And it was a tragic um, event that just kind of rattled our whole world. But when you have a 10 year old boy that, you know, is told that his dad's never coming back and he won't ever get to spend time with him again. Um, there's a lot of grief that goes into that. And I think back, you know, it was, a, it was, you know, several months later and I think back and I'm so thankful that we had the relationship that we had. And, you know, I'm not expecting everybody to be best friends after they get divorced, but when your parents you need to partner like parents. You know, you create like a, a almost like a business relationship where you know, it may not be married, but if you have a child involved, you know, like recognize that you're a parent of that child together and make it about them. And if we hadn't done that, my son's grieving process would look so different. And um, and it would just be a different world for us today. But right now, you know, he he's doing so well and he's loved. And we talk about his dad on a daily basis. Um, but I'm just so thankful that he was able to experience that and that I'm able to help guide other parents on how to make um, that reality of co-parenting their reality. Wow. And again, you know, your story is one of courage and your story is one that you're able to learn from adversities and whether it be a divorce, a changing the format of what a family is going to look like, a tragic event that you've been through or anything else in life, the key to it is to be able to learn from it and be able to sort of garnish the good in what could be really eternally just tragic. The event itself is so tragic, but the fact that you can look at it and look at it through the lens of your son and look at it, and this would be true in any situation, when you can be grateful and be in gratitude for what pieces that you were grateful for, the fact that there were Christmas mornings and games you were together and that your son knew the love of both of you and that you could coexist together is an absolute gift that's irreplaceable. And one of the interesting things I believe about your work is not only have you developed a process surrounding that to help people going through this, but you yourself are such a shining example of coming out of whatever adversity it is and finding gratitude in it. I talk about all the time that the reinvented life, the company I formed was born out of adversity, was born out of me in a place that I had abandoned my health to such an extent that me living and my life held in the balance. But the transformation of that to what is it that I need to lose? What concept is it that I have to get rid of and move into a place of gratitude? And how do I treat myself more gracefully? And how do I treat myself with more kindness? is the basis of the work I do now for people in all sorts of fields. One of the ongoing practices you have that I love is that you're constantly looking at and evaluating and taking inventory of, if you will, where you're at, whether it be looking at those values, looking at the way you're being. And I'd love, as we begin to wrap up here, if you could touch on that for people. Absolutely. I think that, you know, when we look at sustainability, and I know that, that that's part of your thing too, is like, what's sustainable? What can we make happen for a long time? Um, and, and 
I believe that sustainability to, to make things happen and be, um, in your favor, like or the way that you want them to go, we're control. We cannot control anything in this world or anybody, but we can control ourselves. And so when we are able to show up and figure out who we are, what we want, and just like touch back and just use that as a map and, um, and, and a pulse check ask, you know, is this who I am? Is this, you know, do I need to tweak something or am I growing? Where am I growing? Where, what do I need to leave behind? It's an evaluation and it's an inventory to make sure that you are showing up as the person that you want to be and, and offering the legacy that you want as well. Um, because when we don't, it's just like any other maintenance. I mean, I always use the car analogy when, when you don't fill your car up with gas, when you don't drive your car enough, when you don't like, when you don't do the, the, the maintenance things required, things start to break. And the same thing goes for our life is that we're not really, if we're not taking pulse or inventory or filling up our gas tank, then things will start to break. So that to me, that's the best piece of advice that I could possibly give anybody, you know, for a sustainable reinvented outcome of who you want to be. Um, it is to just check back in, check back in on a routine basis and figure out where you need to tweak. You know, absolutely. So what do you do outside of your business? What types of activities or things do you do to help you maintain that life of gratitude? Mm. Well, um, my fam I'm just, my husband and my son are my everything, you know, I, my stepkids, you know, like we, we all just have so much fun together. And I always, that's where really where I fill my bucket, you know, is in my home. Um, and uh, my, I love, I love my flowers. So my son, my husband is but like, planted flowers all over our house and I get to go clip them. That's kind of like my rejuvenation. If I need like five minutes, I walk outside and I clip my flowers and make my vase. That's kind of one of my things. Um, but running and uh, paddle boarding is a big one. Uh, anything that gets me outside and gets me connected um, and gets me, you know, art is another one, you know, it's, it's, uh, and I love serving my community. So I'm a, a part of my son's football team. I'm also a part of our um, church, small group. You know, I, I do small group for fr rising freshman girls and uh, this is my first year doing that. But um, anything that gives back is kind of where I get filled as well. Beautiful. And what advice do you give to people? Because going through, whether it's divorce or, again, overcoming any obstacles, is very energy draining on people. So when you have your yeah. own client or when you have your own groups, these, these girls that you're advising or anyone that you're speaking to, what advice do you give them? What couple of things do you give them to sustain their own energy and get their own energy back up because adversity is draining. And what you want to do is you want to show up with as much energy as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, values is I'm a values girl. That's kind of my foundation for everything is just knowing exactly what serves you and for values. It's not just knowing what the value is. It's, it's kind of giving it a definition um, and then also knowing what it looks like to live it, give it and receive it. And so once we can like identify a value and realize like how it feels when we're getting it, how it feels when we're giving it. Um, it also, uh, like, I, I believe that when you know what you value decisions always become easier because you're, because when you really know what you're feeling and uh, when you live your values, it's easy to say no to, to the things that aren't serving them, but we don't know if they're not serving us if we don't know what it looks like to live it. So I always like, just like, if you find one thing that's really important to you, like for me, family was important to me, but I also realized that, you know, when my family time, my son would be over, uh, playing with his wrestlers and watching TV after dinner. And I would see that he was doing his thing. So I would just check my email, do get my stuff ready for tomorrow, do, you know, all these other things. And what I noticed is that the, I was calling that my family time, but I wasn't building an authentic relationship with the family time. I wasn't sitting in there being present with him. And so when you know what it looks like to live it, it becomes a lot easier to actually um, do those things and then get filled by them. Um, and then also just recognizing that you have a choice. Um, so values and choices are big. I, you know, I mentioned earlier that we make over 55,000 choices every single day. And uh, some of them you don't even realize that you're making. So when you can consciously make this choice, I call it own your sass. 
Uh, and SAS stands for Stop, Assess, Select, and Study. And it gives us an opportunity to um, just, just stop and realize that we have a choice, assess and figure out what choices that are available to us. And we're not always going to make the right choice, but when we consciously make the choice, it sets us up to study it. What worked, what didn't, how can we reflect on that? What we can, can we do differently? Those two things in itself create for me, I feel like the foundations of what sustainability is in almost any change that you make. Incredible. Own your sass. I love that. <laughs> Own and, and uh, oh. really study your sass, I guess would be the more appropriate way yep. to say it. I love that. How do people find you? Please let our listeners and our viewers know where to find you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of the things um, they can find me on is if you go to own your SAS, S A S S dot com, um, there's a free download that I've created on that whole uh, change process, the choices process. Um, so that's one way that you can get in touch with me is just downloading that. Um, and then also you can find me at the Lindsay Ellis dot com and uh follow me on on social media um but yeah i would love to connect with anybody and i've really enjoyed being with you today thank you so much oh it's been my pleasure the idea of the overcome the overcomings that you've gone through and converted it into a business a business that is helping people to recognize that they don't have to stay stuck. And that's what the reinvented life is parallel with. You know, our clients here are people that are involved in our group work and the people involved in attending events that I'm speaking at. One of the messages I really want them to get, and I know you get and, and really uh, have a parallel feeling about, is that people don't have to stay stuck. It is when people stay stuck that progress is impeded, that there isn't growth taking place. Everything I've heard you say is about the notion and the idea that growth is natural. Whether or not it's stemming from something you planned on or not planned on, growth itself is a natural state of being. And I love how you've defined it, that people can actually study it themselves, study what is happening in their life, what are they doing, and more importantly, how are they being in their own life, and is it correlative to the results that they want to find? That is the key. That is why that taking that inventory is so important. That is why, as you have pointed out, assessing their values and is what is going on with them reflective of those values when we are not reflective of our authentic values it ends up that things don't manifest the way we envision them manifesting and it's a very simple thing when you break it down like that but people get into the lives into the domino effect if you will, of their life. And one thing leads to the other and leads to the other. I'll ask you just one last question is, is there one or two or three, whatever it may be, pieces of advice that you would like to give people that are hearing this or viewing this to make their own life easier? Yes, I, I think that it's, um step, step out of fear, you know, because I, I think that there's so many people and, and like myself, you know, for a while is like, you know, if you're not feeling fulfilled or you're, or something's feeling off or you're not, you know, completely enjoying your life, um, you know, that's, that's okay. You, you have power to do something about it. And, and even, and it just takes like small tweaks and it's like, Slowest, smoothest, smoothest, fast. You know, that's like one word that we use. That's like one phrase that we use in our house. Slowest, smooth, and smoothest, fast. Um, you don't have to uproot and change everything all at once. But take baby steps and slowly step out of fear and realize that you're completely worth it and you're completely worth your your own happiness. Um, and to take steps to do that. And and the other thing is is to really just 
there's a lot of, I think, things where people are, um, what I've noticed is it, is it, there's, um, it's expectation, you know, and you, you and I've talked about expectation. And so when we have a lot of expectation of what we should be, um, what we think we should be, what we've told we've been, um, or, or, or anything else that is one of the things that like kind of rip us out from the center. And it's like, when we can drop the expectation and really just, you know, figure out what makes us happy. And when we know what makes us happy and, and I'm a living proof example that um, I was very scared to honor my values that first 30 days. I was, ex- I mean, what if my, what if my boss didn't, uh, did, thought I wasn't engaged? You know, what if my customers think I didn't care about them? What if I lost friends? And I started thinking about, I'm like, but what's, what's the, what if I don't do this? I'm, am I going to live in unhappiness? Am I going to live in this like constant hustle bustle of trying to give to everybody else and pour from an empty cup all the time? Or can I just experiment with this for 30 days? I mean, like it's just 30 days. And a year later, I had just like a magnificent turnaround in my life and that has been sustainable. And I'll tell you, I've been through so many adversities since that day so many adversities, you know, there's, there's been scam, there's been cancer, there's been, you know, my, my son's father passed away, like all of these things that we we've encountered. And I've never felt as flat on my face as I did when I didn't have a foundation and when I didn't really value my own self. So if there's one piece of advice that I can give any listeners, it's value yourself because you're worth it. Yes, absolutely. We, that is the best way to conclude value yourself because you're worth it. Absolutely love that. Thank you for your candidness. Thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for your advice. That is what the reinvented life is all about. Grab on to people that celebrate those values, celebrate that change. And remember with change, all things are possible. It is not something as you point out to fear, growth is something to embrace. If you want to get in touch with me, info at thereinventedlife.com. Look forward to seeing everyone next week on the Reinvented Life Show. Thank you to Lindsay Ellis. Thank you to our listeners and our viewers for your loyal following and for knowing that one can reinvent and make whatever changes in your life you want to make. Have a great rest of the week, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to The Reinvented Life with Pamela Chanel David. Tune in each week so we can work and grow together to become the best version of ourselves. Keep striving, keep dreaming, keep working, and embrace change. You may contact Pamela Chanel at info at the reinvented life.com.